This is tutorial 6. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we looked at how to pass parameters to our uh, GET and POST requests. Uh, we're going to expand on that a little bit in this tutorial. We're going to look at uh, other ways in which the parameters are passed. Uh, we're going to look at different HTML controls and uh, we'll see how uh, they affect the way we uh, retrieve those parameters. Um, the example that we have here, the code that we wrote in our previous tutorial, has a simple text box. And uh, the text box has a name which corresponds to the get parameter that we're going to do here. We're going to do a get parameter of that name. And this string, the username string, will be associated with the value that the user is going to pass when they fill this text box and click submit. So the value is passed to the name of the control itself. So it's it's pretty straightforward. Whatever name you use here, you use the same name in order to do a get parameter and you retrieve the value. So let's try a few more things here. Um, we'll have one more text box. Let me call it full name. Well, I'm not going to worry about the labels here. Let's, I'll just call it full name or let me write a label here. Okay, so I have two text boxes here. Uh, so if the user fills this, there will be a parameter called full name that will be passed. So uh, let me capture that here as well. So I have a username here, which I'm capturing. So I need to capture the extra parameter as well. So I'll use another string variable. And uh, of course, I can call the string variable anything, but this has to be same as the name of the text box. So I'll say full name here. OK, so I'm going to modify this one. Note that we are not modifying the do get, because in our form, we have uh, mentioned that the method is post. So we know that the do post is the one that's going to get executed. So I'm, I'm just going to modify this for now. OK. So um, we're going to tell the user what their full name is. Save. OK. Tomcat redeploys it automatically. Now go back to this. Make sure you refresh the form. This is a mistake that I did last time. Uh, unless you refresh the form, the changes that you do in the IDE will not get reflected over here. So uh, I'm going to submit this now. I'll say ABC. My full name is ABC DEF. Submit quit. So there you go. Um, it's a hello from the post method. So we know that the post is run. Uh, we know the we have captured the username, and we have also captured the full name. So there are two parameters that are passed simultaneously. Okay, so uh, let's add a few more things here. Okay, I'll add a profession radio. Type is radio, name is, I'll just call that prof, I need to pass a value, so um, pass the value developer. Okay, 
we'll add one more radio let's call it architect okay so I have two radio buttons here let me add a break here so that looks neat okay so I have two radio buttons here and uh, they have the name of prof so I need to capture this value in the request dot get parameter the same way as I would capture a text box but instead of a value that the user types what will be passed is the value that the user selects so uh, let me go ahead and add that code here um, I'm not going to add to the same line I'll have a new line string prof equals request dot get parameter prof so I'm capturing the value that is being passed in the prof parameter Let's say out dot friend ln you are There you go. So, uh, yeah, now I've saved it. So I think Tomcat should auto deploy. Yeah, it has. Now, let me refresh this again. So uh, I have this radio. I'll choose developer. The other values are there. I'll say submit. Okay, so here we go. We have uh, the earlier text. And we also have the newly captured value. So again, if you have multiple radio buttons, you can find out which is the one that's been selected by capturing the value. You can probably have an if or uh, some conditional there to uh, take action based on that. Next, we're going to do a select. Select. name equals mm, let me say location an option again here I need to have a value Okay, just some something arbitrary here. Okay, this is also straightforward, not not a big difference. comes up now is the tricky part now what happens if I choose more than one let's say I have this uh, option of choosing more than one I'll give a size equals three a few more options okay again just some 
arbitrary values for testing okay now let me not change this okay I'm still gonna retain the code the same way but what I've done here is I have enabled the user to choose more than one so uh, let's see how this works reload this now I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll just choose here submit query everything works fine now what happens if I choose more than one I'll say here and there only here comes up now what's happening to there uh, in order to catch multiple parameters we need to make a change instead of calling get parameter we need to call another method let's have a look at that this is something that we need to do for uh, any HTML control that has multiple values that's being sent uh, another example that I can think of right now is a checkbox you can check multiple items so in that case there are multiple values that are being sent for the same name which is in this case it's location it'll be the name of the checkbox in the case of the checkbox so in that case how do you capture all of them so let's have a look at another method request dot get parameter values get parameter values knows that the value that you're passing is you know it's it has multiple values so in that case it's going to give you all those values but in order to capture that you will need to take it inside a string array it will not uh, you know you cannot pass that to a string the return type is a string array so if you just move your mouse over you can see that the um, sorry yeah the, uh, the return parameter is a string array so let's do that we will uh, pass the same location here but instead of catching these values inside uh, a string I will catch those values inside a string array. Okay. So just to get the length dot print and length get a quick for loop Take this out.println value and we'll print location of i. It's not really the best code, but it should serve a purpose for now. So, um, yeah, it's auto deployed. Now, let me choose here and there. Let's have a query. So I get a response saying I'm at two places here and there. So both these values, the values that I've selected here, both these have gone as a string array. So I can I can select all of them, and you know it's gonna it's gonna create those many new strings in the array, and it's gonna it's gonna add them. So it's here the count is five, and here it's printed all the values that I've selected. So the same thing works for um, checkboxes also. Uh, you will have to use the get parameter values. You can of course use a get parameter, but then it's going to return only the first item in the array, like we saw earlier. Uh, 